probably already reading because I bet this video is pretty short. We're going to work on applying linear functions today. So we're going to look at them in some real world contexts. So here's just the first example. Um, and I basically want you to try all of these problems on your own before you even see um, what I do. Uh, but here it is. A health food store has 15 bottles of one vitamin in stock. And then the manufacturer ships these vitamins in boxes of 20. I want you to write a linear function that relates the number of boxes to the total number of bottles of the vitamins at the store. And then graph the function to model the situation. So it already tells us our variables. They are the number of boxes and then the total number of bottles. And I want to think about which one depends on the other. It looks like the total number of bottles would depend on the number of boxes that you have. So I'm going to call the number of bottles Y and the number of boxes X. Okay, and so you should have already tried this and see if you come up with mine. It looks like Y, my number of bottles, it equals, we already had 15 at the beginning, so 15 plus 20 times the number of boxes. Y equals 15 plus 20X, or Y equals 20X plus 15 is a good equation. When you graph the function, what I want you to keep um, like focused on is that you're labeling your axes, that you're making a good scale, you're titling your graph. So like health food vitamins or something like that. I might title it. And I'm going to want to make sure that my number of bottles goes on the X. I'm sorry, my number of boxes goes on the X, because obviously I just told you that. Um, the, and then we're going to say um, my number of bottles goes on the Y. So when I'm looking at bottles, I mean, if they only have 15 in stock, they're probably not going to get a ton, of, ton more boxes. So I'm just going to go like 0 and then 1, 2. I'm going to skip. Go by ones, but skip around every few. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So maybe up to ten boxes. And what I want to think about that, if they have ten boxes, and I'm going to do 20 times 10 plus 15, I want my graph to go up to at least 215, just so it's like a decent scale. So I think I'm going to count by 25s every two on mine. There's 50, 75. And I think this should fit pretty nicely, so I'm going up at least as high as I need to to make it all fit. Um, and, not, and still filling the majority of my graph. So that can get me up to 250, which is pretty good. And it's an easy number to count by, so that's why I picked it. Okay. And then when we're graphing it, I'm just going to graph some of the points. So like I start out, I have 15 bottles. And then I go up by 20 every time, so I've got you know, 35. And then after 2, I have 55. And I might just plot like what I have at 10 is 215. So I get a good picture of my graph. I might do like 6 is 135. Something where I'm getting a few of the key points spaced apart. And I can see that it's going up in a straight line. Now, even though this is discrete data, if I want to show a pattern, I could connect. Otherwise, I could leave it just at the whole numbers. Okay, I'll connect just to see the pattern so you can see what's going on. Something like that. All right, this time we are going to look at a graph and you are going to try to analyze it when it's already made for you. So I want you to look at this graph. Um, students in the ninth grade class, they drew the following graph to represent how much money would be in the class fund after selling sets of photos of their year's activity. It's really helpful if you can come up with a good approximation for the slope and y intercept. Um, looks to me like this point right here, I'm going to guess that's near 5100. And I'm going to guess this point right here is about 0, 0.25. I'll just make that approximation. Okay. The reason why I might care about like the first and last points, it doesn't look like it's going up at a perfectly straight line, but it's close to a straight line. So I like to find this out because the y-intercept where it starts, it's about 25, and I'm making an approximation. My slope, remember that's the change in y over change in x. And I'm going to use my first and last point just to get a, like, because I found them already. So from 0 to 25 to 5, 100, it went up by 75, and it went over by 5. So 75 over 5, it's about 15. So the slope should be near 15, 
the y-intercept is 25. So I'm going to ask you to answer two questions on this, and I want the real-world answers. So what does the slope and the y-intercept of the graph, what do those mean in terms of this situation? Try to answer that, then come back and check. Okay. So I hope you say, let's start with the y-intercept. The y-intercept of 25 means that they had $25 in the fund to start out with. So before they even sold any photos, there was $25 in the fund, the beginning of the year, be beginning of the fundraiser, or whatever it was. Okay, and then the slope is 15. That means that it's $15 for each um, set of photos. So that's how much they're making for each set of photos. $15 all right made for each set of photos. Okay, and then if you're looking at this next one, okay, um, so this was the original one, and we said the slope was about 15 for the slope, and the y-intercept was about 25. If the graph had the same slope but a y-intercept of 40, what could you conclude? Okay, write your guess and then check with mine. I would say they had $40 to start out with, okay, to begin with. Um, the next one, if the graph had a slope of 12.5, what could you conclude? Make sure you answer that and then check with mine. Okay, I'm going to say they make $12.50 $12 per set of photos, okay. All right, so really, I want you to try to come up with as many facts as you can that you're able to find out about a real world situation just by looking at a graph. What are all the things that you can figure out just by looking at a graph? Try to come up with quite a few, but that's it for this lesson.